In this video, we're going to look at perpendicular lines. This is going to build upon the ideas of my two previous videos, which were the equation of a line and parallel lines. I'll put links to those two videos in this video's description if you want to check those ones out first. In the previous video, we looked at parallel lines. So if we take a line and draw one that's parallel to it, you can see that these lines never meet. So we would say that parallel lines never meet. When we looked at the gradients of parallel lines, we realized they must have the same gradient, since they have the same steepness. So we said that parallel lines have the same gradient. But what about perpendicular lines? Well, a line is perpendicular to another one if it crosses it specifically at a right angle, so 90 degrees. So perpendicular lines cross at a right angle. But what about their gradients? Well, that's the main point of this video. So let's take a line where we know its equation, like this one here. The equation of this line is y equals 2x plus 1. Now, what if we draw a line that's perpendicular to this line? And I'm going to make it cross at the same point on the y axis, so one here. So these two lines are perpendicular because there's a 90 degree angle between them. How could we work out the gradient and the equation of the purple line? Well, the first thing to notice is the red line has a positive gradient, and the purple line must have a negative gradient since it slopes in the other direction. So we know for sure the gradient's going to be negative. We also know they both have the same y intercept since they cross the y axis at plus 1. So most people's first instinct is that the equation might be y equals negative 2x plus 1. Unfortunately, this isn't correct. Let's have a look at calculating the equation of the line using the original method. Let's pick two points on the line and use a gradient triangle. So we do the change in y, which is negative 1, and the change in x, which is 2. The gradient is then the change in y over the change in x, so negative 1 over 2, which is the same as negative 1 half. So the gradient of the purple line wasn't negative 2, it was negative 1 half. So the equation of the line would be y equals negative 1 half x plus 1. Let's try a second example. So this time we'll use this red line, and the equation of this one is y equals 3x plus 2. I'll draw a perpendicular line to this, so one that crosses at 90 degrees and goes through the same point on the y-axis. We'll use the same method again by picking two nice points and drawing a gradient triangle. So the change in y is going to be negative 1, and the change in x is 3. So the gradient is negative 1 third. Both of these lines have the same y-intercept again, so the equation would be y equals negative 1 third x plus 2. Let's have a look at some more examples. So if we write all of these in a table, and we put the gradient of the original line, so the red one, and the gradient of the one that was perpendicular, so the purple one. For the original line on the first example, the gradient was 2. And for the one that was perpendicular, it was negative 1 half. And the second line I did, the gradient was 3 and the one that was perpendicular was negative one third. Now you might be able to see a pattern here that will continue. So if I increase the gradient of the original line once again to four, the gradient of the one that's perpendicular will be negative one quarter. Notice how one of them is always positive and the other one is always negative. This applies the other way around as well. So rather than writing five next, what if it were negative five? Well, you can probably spot that it's going to be one fifth and it will be positive this time since the original line had a negative gradient. So the gradient of the perpendicular line would be 1 fifth. You may have noticed that if we ignore the negative sign, the two gradients are linked because they're reciprocals of each other. The reciprocal of 2 is 1 over 2, the reciprocal of 3 is 1 over 3, and so on. When we have reciprocals, the two numbers multiply together to give 1. But since one of them is always negative in this example, the gradients of perpendicular lines will multiply to give negative 1. For example, 2 times negative 1 half is equal to negative 1 because you can do 2 times a half, and 2 halves are 1 whole, but we've also got a positive multiplied by a negative, so we get negative 1 whole, or negative 1. This applies to all of these pairs. So 3 times negative 1 third, that's negative 1. Same for 4 times negative 1 quarter, and also negative 5 times 1 fifth. This tells us that if two lines are perpendicular, their gradients multiply to give negative 1. Let's have a look at some more examples. So if the gradient of the original line was 9, we know the gradient of the one that's perpendicular is going to be negative, and it's also going to be the reciprocal. The reciprocal of 9 is 1 ninth, so it's negative 1 ninth. If the original line had a gradient of negative 7, we do the reciprocal of 7, which is 1 over 7, and since the original line here has a negative gradient, the new one will be positive, so it's positive 1 seventh. If the original line had a gradient of 1 sixth, we do the reciprocal of this, which is just 6, but since this one's positive, the perpendicular one must be negative, so negative 6. If the gradient of the original line was negative 1 eighth, we do the reciprocal of this, which is 8, and since that's already negative, the new one will be positive, so it's just positive 8. 
Now, all of these examples so far have something in common. They have an integer, so a whole number, and then a fraction that's just one over something. But that isn't always going to be the case. What if the gradient of the original line was a fraction, like two thirds? To find the reciprocal of something like this, you can just imagine swapping that two and three around. So the reciprocal of two over three is three over two. And of course, that's positive, so we need a negative. So the gradient of the perpendicular one here would be negative three over two. And if the gradient of the original line was negative five over three, we do the reciprocal of that, so three over five, and this one's negative, so the perpendicular one will be positive, so just three over five. If the gradient of the original line was given as a decimal, for example, 0 0.9, we'd want to convert this to a fraction first. 0 0.9 is the same as nine over 10, so the reciprocal of this, flip it upside down, 10 over nine, and it needs to be negative since the original one was positive, so negative 10 over nine. It could also be given as a mixed number, so for example, two and a quarter. And once again, the best way is just to convert this to a fraction. So to convert two and a quarter to an improper fraction, it would be nine over four. If we flip this upside down, we get four over nine, and that's positive, so the perpendicular one will be negative, so negative four over nine. So this is how you find the gradient of a perpendicular line if you know the gradient of the original line. Now we're going to have a look at some questions that use this idea. The first thing you could be asked to do in your exam is given two lines, show that they're perpendicular. Well, we know that if they're going to be perpendicular, their gradients must multiply to give negative one. And if it doesn't, they're not perpendicular. So let's find the gradients of these two lines. Well, the first line's quite easy. The gradient of that one is just five, since it's written in the correct form, y equals mx plus c. The second line though isn't. So we're going to rearrange this one first, so it is in that form, y equals mx plus c. To do this, we subtract x from both sides first. On the left, this will leave us with five y, and on the right, 35 minus x. Then we could divide both sides by five. On the left, five y divided by five is just one y, and on the right, 35 divided by five is seven. Then we need to divide negative x by five. Well, that's just like negative one x, so if we divide negative one by five, we get negative one fifth. So it's negative one fifth x. Now we can see the gradient of this second line, it's negative one over five. And if we multiply five and negative one over five together, we end up with negative one. So we could now write that therefore, these lines are perpendicular. Let's try a second example. So we'll go for the first line, and once again, this is written in a nice form, we can see the gradient straight away is here, negative two thirds. Let's work with the other line, and this isn't in the form y equals mx plus c, so we need to rearrange. We're going to start by adding six x to both sides, if we add it to the left, the negative 6x will cancel, so it's just 4y. And if we add it to the right, we've got 6d and then plus 6x. Here we need to divide both sides by 4. The left hand side, 4y divided by 4 is just 1y. And on the right, 60 divided by 4, that's 15. And then 6 divided by 4, we could just write that as 6 over 4. So it's plus 6 over 4x. 6 over 4 will simplify though, you can divide both of those by 2, so 3 over 2. Now we have both of the gradients, since this one is three over two. If we multiply negative two thirds by three over two, we would get negative six over six, which is negative one. So we could write, therefore, these lines are perpendicular. So to show two lines are perpendicular, you want to find their gradients and show they multiply to give negative one. A second type of question that you could be given is where you're given the equation of a first line, so L1, and then we're told about L2, which is a perpendicular line and goes for a specific point. And the question will probably ask us to work out an equation for L2. The first thing to notice in this question is since we have L1, we know its gradient. Its gradient must be negative four. So the gradient of L1 is negative four. We've been told that L2 is perpendicular to L1, so we can work out the gradient of L2 as well. We just do the negative reciprocal. So if the gradient of L1 was negative four, the gradient of L2 will be positive and it will be the reciprocal of four, which is a quarter. So the gradient of L2 is one quarter. Now, since we're trying to write its equation, we can write it in the form y equals mx plus c, where m is the gradient and c is the y-intercept. We know the gradient, so we can replace m with one quarter. So instead of y equals mx plus c, we can write y equals a quarter x plus c. But we don't know this y-intercept, the c value. We can work this out though, because we've been given some information about a point that's on this line. We've been told it goes through the point 12, 7. In the coordinate 12, 7, the 12 is an x value and the 7 is a y value. So we can substitute these points into the equation of the line to work out the value of c. 
So let's replace the x with a 12 and the y with a 7. So in the equation, it starts with y equals, so we put 7 equals. Then it's 1 quarter of x, so that's 1 quarter of 12, and then plus c. We can do a quarter of 12, that's just 3, so we have 7 equals 3 plus c. You can solve this equation by subtracting 3 from both sides, that will give you 4 equals c, or c equals 4. Now that we know the value of c, we can go back to this equation here and replace the c with a 4. So the final answer to the equation of the line L2 is y equals 1 quarter x plus 4. Let's try a second example like this. We're going to start by looking at the gradient of L1 again. This time it's 3 quarters. Then we can work out the gradient of L2 by doing the negative reciprocal of this. So the gradient of L1 is positive, so the gradient of L2 will be negative, and the reciprocal of 3 over 4 is 4 over 3. So the gradient for L2 is negative 4 over 3. Now we'll consider the form y equals mx plus c again. So we know m is the gradient, which is negative 4 over 3. So we write y equals negative 4 over 3x plus c. Once again, we need to use this point that it tells us to try and work out the value of c. So the 6 is an x coordinate, and the negative 1 is the y coordinate. So let's replace the y with negative 1, and this equals negative 4 over 3 lots of 6, and then plus c. So we have negative 1 equals, now negative 4 thirds of 6. To work this out, I would do 1 third of 6, which is 2, and then multiply this by 4, which is 8, and we've also got that negative there. So this would be negative 8, and then plus c. To solve this, we add 8 to both sides. Negative 1 plus 8 is positive 7, and on the right-hand side, the negative 8 will cancel, so we have c. So we now know the value of c, which is 7. So if we go back to this equation and replace the c with a positive 7, we get y equals negative 4 thirds x plus 7. And that's the answer to this question. There's yet another type of question you need to be prepared for. Sometimes they give the points as coordinates like this. So we've got a, b, and c. We're asked to find the equation of the line perpendicular to ab going through c. In order to work out the gradient of the perpendicular line, we're going to need the gradient of AB itself first. To work out the gradient when you have coordinates like this, we're going to use this formula here. So we need to work out what those values are. So since A is the first coordinate, this 1 here is x1, and this 5 here is y1. B is the second coordinate, so we've got x2 and y2. So let's just substitute those numbers into the formula to work out the gradient of AB. So the gradient of AB is equal to y2, which is 6, minus y1, which is 5, over x2, which is 3, subtract x1, which is 1. 6 take away 5, well, that's just 1, and 3 take away 1 is 2. So the gradient of the line AB is 1 half. But we don't want the gradient of AB, we want the one that's perpendicular to AB. So we do the negative reciprocal of 1 half. The reciprocal of 1 half is 2, and we need it to be negative since 1 half is positive, so the gradient of the line that we're interested in is negative 2. This means the equation of the line that we're looking for is y equals negative 2x plus c. The rest of the question is much the same as the ones we've done previously. We're going to use this point here, since we know it's on the line, to work out the value of c. So we're going to substitute the 1 for x and the negative 5 for y. So we have negative 5 equals negative 2 lots of 1 plus c. So we have negative 5 equals negative 2 times 1 is just negative 2, and then plus c. We can solve this equation by adding 2 to both sides. If you add 2 to the left, you get negative 3, and the 2 on the right will cancel the negative 2, so you have just c. Now that we have the value of c, we can go back to this equation and replace it with negative 3. So the final answer is y equals negative 2x, subtract 3. Let's try one more example that's like this. So this time I've changed the coordinates, but we're still going to find the equation of the line perpendicular to AB that goes through C. So to do a question like this, we're going to work out the gradient of AB first, using this formula here. We need to work out what all these values are for the formula, so this will be x1, this will be y1, this will be x2, and this will be y2. So let's substitute those values in. So the gradient of the line AB will be y2, which is 3, subtract y1, which is negative 2, over x2, which is 8, subtract x1, which is 6. 3 subtract negative 2 gives the same value as 3 plus 2, which is 5. And on the bottom, 8 take away 6 is 2. So this is the gradient of the line AB, but of course we want the gradient of the one that's perpendicular. So if this gradient is positive, we want one that's negative, and we need to do the reciprocal of 5 over 2, which is 2 over 5. So the gradient of the line that we need is negative 2 over 5. 
So now we know the gradient, we can write it in the general form, y equals negative 2 fifth x plus c. To work out the value of c, we'll once again use a coordinate that we're given. We're told the line goes through this point here, so we can substitute in those values. This one's x, and this one's y. So y is going to be negative 2. Then we have negative 2 fifths of x, and we know x is 10, so negative 2 fifths of 10 plus c. So we have negative 2 on the left, and on the right, to do negative 2 fifths of 10, I would do 1 fifth of 10 first, and 1 fifth of 10 is just 2, and then multiply that by the 2 on the top, which is 4. And of course, we have a negative here, so it's negative 4, plus c. To solve this, we add 4 to both sides. If you add 4 on the left, negative 2 plus 4 is just positive 2, and on the right, the 4s will cancel, so we have c. Now we know the value of c, we just go back to this equation and replace the c with a 2. So the final answer to this one is y equals negative 2 fifths x plus 2. Thank you for watching this video, I hope you found it useful. Check out the one I think you should watch next, subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos, and go and try the exam questions linked in this video's description.